Uh, to kick things off, we really just want to open it up to you all. Um, these office hours are, are however you want to use them. Um, if we don't have any specific questions or use cases or anything uh, that you all want to walk through, we've prepared a little bit of a slide for kind of generic tips and tricks and things like that that can help you all when utilizing uh, Autodesk Build. But for now, if you want to uh, come off mute or use the chat function to, to ask us anything that you might be uh, having issues with or are seeing in the tool that um, maybe you want to learn how to, to do a better way, uh, feel free to, to let us know. Yeah, and uh, just and if you have questions on Build or even Docs, BIM Collaborate, Collaborate Pro, take off. Um, you know, happy to happy to help you. Any questions? There's uh, we're giving away some prizes. Oh, come on, don't be shy. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll um, let me share a couple things. Maybe kind of get get things started for you. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, some recent changes I thought might be helpful for you to be aware of. I guess I guess uh, let me ask this question first, if you guys don't mind putting in the chat. Um, can you can you put in the chat which uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud products you are using? And if you're not using any, you know, just specify none. And let me bring up the chat so we can see that. Okay, build. There are some good practices for managing issues added to drawings. We found that they are persistent. Okay. Uh, what about everybody else? Uh, what other products are you currently using? Or if you have a question like Jack had just asked. All right, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead. Um, ah, perfect, I see some more typing coming in. So we'll, we'll, we'll address Jack's question uh, as soon as I see some of the others uh, finish adding here, but I'll start out with talking about issues. Um, so whether it's Autodesk Docs or Autodesk Build, uh, we can create issues and issues can be added to 2D drawings or 3D models. Uh, so we have different ways in which we can manage the issues and see the typing has stopped. So I'll tell you what, I will go ahead and just bring up my Autodesk Build and we'll take a look at that. Let's do this. And I'll share my screen. All right. So we have the issues manager. So a few things about the issues. Um, I'll show you a few things that if you're a project administrator, you have ways of, of customizing your issues or, or uh, adding some additional data that you want to collect to your issues. Um, first thing is, you know, before I actually go into adding an issue to a drawing, um, again, I can do this in Navisworks or I can do that. I'm sorry, I can do this in Autodesk Docs or I can do this in Autodesk Build. I'll go up to the Sheets version since that's on the build side. And, you know, I'll take a look first um, at some settings when it comes to issues. So I'm going to come down here to Issues. And I'll come over here to Settings and then we'll come over here to Types. Now, something brand new you guys may not be aware of, but we do have issue templates. So that is something that I want to talk to you about. But first, let's talk a little bit about managing issues. By default, out of the box, there are these default um, issue types or issue categories, I should say. Um, the issue categories, the ones with the little padlock next to them, that means that they're, you can't delete them. Those are provided by Autodesk. If you expand on any one of those, you can then read the different issue types. 
Um, the issue types is the first way in which we want to manage issues. So we can start filtering and organizing, sorting our issues based on type. So you really should start utilizing types as much as possible. I normally tell people during training, you know, take a look at all the different types that Autodesk provides out of the box. It's, but if you if there's something that's missing, you can easily come up here and create either a new category or a new type. And to create a new category, you simply just give that a title, you know, what you want to group this by. And I'll just put in here my webinar, oops, my web uh, issues. And you'll notice by default it says it's inactive. And the reason is because when you create a category, you also need to add an issue type. And so I can come down here and add an issue type, and now it automatically make it active. Now, if I didn't do that and I just hit create, it'll make a, a category, but then I'll have to go, bin, go in there and activate it. As far as the different issue types, then you can type in here whatever you want, and you can say, you know, um, ripped carpet. So maybe maybe your issue types are <clears throat> around you know room inspections. So notice that very easy to go up there, correct it, <clears throat> create a new issue type in here, and I'll call this one um, you know uh, damaged walls, and I'll just hit create. Now if I scroll down and I take a look and I'll put in here my room inspections, I've got my damaged walls. Now if you notice, these both came in with a check mark, but I can come over here and I can edit the label and I can put up the three letters. So I'll put in DW for damaged walls and maybe RC for ripped carpeting. But again, I would take a look at all the ones that are provided by Autodesk, like under punch list, we've got architectural punch, pre-punch and just generic punch. Under observation, we've got observation, quality, and safety. But that's the first thing you want to do is, is create different issue types. Now, one thing to mention is sometimes you want to you want to collect additional data. So let's say, for example, that I create this issue type for damaged walls, but specifically for walls, I want to track which wall. You know, and maybe I just want to track either it's the north wall, the south wall, east wall, west wall. Make it real easy. Well, I can come over here to custom fields and I can create a custom field and I'll just put in here, uh, you know, wall location. And I could require somebody to type in the location or I can create a drop down where somebody now has to pick, you know, which wall is it? Is it the north wall, south wall? then I just won't bother with the others but you get the point but when I create that custom field for and I'll put in here I'm going to change this to wall damage locations and we'll get rid of this one so now that I've created that particular custom field if I relate that to my wall inspections or my room inspections and when I come over here you'll notice I can come over here it says manage fields Select on that, and if I scroll down to the bottom, right here I can add a custom field, and I'll put in here wall damage location, and I'll hit add. Now that'll be a field that somebody has to fill in when they create an issue. Now if I come back to my sheets, and we'll just jump into a drawing and we'll do that. I'm gonna go to sheet uh, A101, I'll pick A101A. And now, you know, I'll walk into a wall. I'm going to assume this is project. This is this project north is also true north. So let's go something somewhere. It's a little cleaner. We'll come over here. I want to go to my issues and I've come down here and I'll see my I'll just simply type in here wall. And here's my under room inspections damaged walls. And I can just place it maybe down here. And you'll notice I could it, it pre populates the title. If I scroll down, you'll see at the very bottom right here, wall damage location. From here now I can I can select, is it the north wall, is it the south wall? The reason you might wanna do that is because you may not wanna leave it, certain information you collect, you may not wanna leave it up to people to type it in. Um, if you do, some people might, you know, type it in all caps, some people all lowercase, or some people may just say, you know, 
the 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 door wall or wall with window. So if you kind of specify, you know, choices for people, it in it's enforcing specific standards that later when we have to go to filter, I want to look at all in this case here, look at all the issues I have that are on the north wall. And it doesn't matter which room, I can search by that that field. Now, I do want to show you something, though, that is pretty interesting, which is recently re released. And I've been waiting for this because this used to be available back in the BIM 360 days and even, I think, in BIM 360 field. But there is an option with issues to create issue templates. And if I come over to settings, you'll notice right down here it says templates. And I can actually create a template. So I created one yesterday for a customer who wanted to see it. And I'll just create another one right here. And so, you know, if there's specific issues that get that are pretty common, you want to save the time that people have to fill in the blanks, if you will. So, you know, in that case, this one here, I had broken light switch. I could say uh, I'll put in here um, ripped carpeting. Um, <clears throat> I'll make that issue is going to be active. The status on it, I'll leave that as open. The issue type, remember I had a custom issue type that I created specifically for room inspections. I have ripped carpet. And description, I could put in here um, carpet ripped near, and then maybe somebody can fill in the blank afterwards. Or maybe I just leave it blank altogether. But then I can assign it to somebody. So maybe I assign this to my subcontractor. I'll assign it to myself for now. I can specify a watcher, you know, who's going to keep an eye on issues that are created. The location I won't fill in because, you know, I have, may have ripped carpeting in different rooms. And then I specify the root cause. Um, you know, maybe the root cause it's common, but if it changes, you know, I'll just leave this blank. Otherwise, I could pick that. But you'll notice in here, I'm just going to put in here. Um, this is from a template. Oops. And I'll just simply hit create issue template. So now when I go back into my sheets and then I go back to my particular drawing, you'll notice that it's going to pre-populate for me. So this unit, I'll come down here and instead of going to my types, I'll come over here to templates. And I see I've got one here for ripped carpeting. And I'll simply pop it in here and it automatically filled in the title. It automatically selected the correct type. It automatically filled in the description. This came from the template, but I could always override any of this. So carpet. So I can update any of the information as needed and pretty much can continue on. So the issue templates are really, really uh, uh, very helpful, especially when the guys are working out in the field and they have to generate issues on the fly. Well, I've generated some issues. Let's go over to the issue log. And, you know, here's my damaged walls. Here's my ripped carpeting. Well, how do you manage this list? If you notice, I've got 176 issues. OK, when data is filled out, we could filter on just about any of the data. If it's not filled out, then it makes it harder, right? I can't I can't filter by due date. But if I did, if I had due date filled in, which I've got a few areas here, I could generate reports by due date. Now you'll see an option up here to export all issues, but if I come over here to this filter, you can filter on all this data right here. So maybe a particular category. Come down here and I'm going to look for room inspections. And now I see just those issues I created for room inspections. I'm going to uncheck that. Instead, I'll come down here to status. I've got 176 issues. I want to see those issues that are in review. And I've got 11 that are in review. Remember I mentioned earlier about location. 
you know, if you set up locations where people pick locations uh, off a menu, then I can come in here and say, all right, show everything that in the tower. I guess nothing in there. Barracks, what do I got? Nothing there. Area C, I guess I don't have anything listed. But if you, if the locations were selected, you know, I could see all anything, all the issues related to a particular room, a particular, particular building, a particular floor. And so, you know, I can drill down however the issues were created and people can simply select from from the list. And then I can come down here and maybe look at anything um, based on, you know, th the due date. So that's how we would manage issues, but I'm going to take it one step further to really show you um, on the report side. I'm going to come down here to reports. And with Autodesk, they provide you a template for issues. Now, what I'm going to do, since I have a number of templates, I have 35 templates, I'm going to sort this by created by because the ones that say default template, these are what Autodesk provides. The good news is what I'm going to show you here with, with, with the report is once you learn to create one report, all the other reports are created nearly the same way, which is really nice. So in this case here, I'm going to go to issue detail right here, this default template, issue detail, and I'm going to select on it. So I want to look at all the issues that have been, that are currently, the status is they're currently open, pending and in review. Some of them are closed. I don't care about the closed ones, but I want to go ahead and, and when I do something like this, I usually come up here and say, okay, issue detail. And I'll say, you know, filter by status. And then I'll come down here and I want to look at all the issues that have been assigned to to a particular person or company. And I'll just put all the issues assigned to me. And I'll put in my name. And if I want to get really down and nitty gritty here and say, you know what, let's look at due date. Let's look at all the issues that are overdue for Mark Petrucci. So, you know, maybe I say filter by overdue issues assigned to Mark Petrucci. And because I've set up those filters, now I can sort this, especially since due date, maybe I want to put the ones at the top of the list, the ones that are really overdue. So I'll ascend, uh, do a descending order. I can include a cover page, a table of contents, a sheet overview. Um, I can include custom fields. Um, I'll tell you what, sheet overview, I just noticed that today. Um, I'm going to turn that on. Um, Autodesk is constantly making changes to this. I can include photos. And I'm going to say two photos per row. Um, what I'm going to do, since I don't have that many overdue issues, um, I'm going to remove that one. And I'm just going to say um, open issues assigned to Mark, just because I want a bigger report. But I've now created this. You notice I don't have the option to save it. I have save as. Because I started with the Autodesk template, I have to create a new template or save it as a new template, and it's going to call it this name right here. So I'll hit save as new template. So that's saved, and if you notice, let's expand on this. Okay. Actually, I can't. Let me click off of this and I'll click back on. So here's issue detail filtered by open issues assigned to Mark Petrucci. This is what, what I have to do. What I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll say run the report. Now that's going to take a minute to run, but I do want to show you if I come back over here to templates and you come over here, I can actually schedule a report. So that report, this one here, oops, this one here, I can run this weekly so that every Monday morning or maybe a couple times a week at 8 a.m. between a certain date range, generate that report and automatically email it to somebody. 
and I'm just going to send it to myself. It says, hey, there's your open issues, Mark. Every week, no excuse. You got an email. You need to review that. Now, if I want to send this to other people, I can type in any other address here. And just, you know, put it in here, dot com. Doesn't matter who that person is. They don't have to be a member of the project. And then I can put in the message here. Here is your open issues. And I'll hit save schedule. Now, Monday morning, I will get this report sent to me automatically. And I don't even have to think about it. If you generate more issues during the week, those issues will automatically be added to the report as long as they're assigned to me and they're open. If we go to the report log, the issue detail has finished. I'm going to go ahead and download it. And it's downloading right here. And I'll click on it. And when I open it, you can see right here, there's the title of my report. Here's the date and timestamp. Who created it? Um, how it's sorted by due date. Here's how it's filtered by. If I scroll down, here's my table of contents. And you'll notice, um, so it looks like, looks like this sheet, looks like it includes the entire sheet in my report. So every time it creates an issue, looks like it's, it's including the entire sheet. So that's something that's new. But this is what I'm used to seeing. I will see the issue up here. I can read details about it. I've got a, a snapshot of the floor plan to show generally where that issue might be. And if I scroll down, let's go down a little bit more here. Here's another issue detail, broken window. There it is right there. If I scroll down, you notice the photo is also included. And if I had multiple photos, there'd be two photos per row. If I did three, they'd be smaller. But if I have a lot of photos, I may want to do that. So really interesting this 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 included sheets here. So I'll have to um, think about you know the 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 pros and cons to something doing something like that. But you can see this report as I scroll down on the left hand side. I've got a lot of information here. This is a detailed report. My other option is to generate a a summary report, which wouldn't have as much detail, but still provide me a lot of great information that's been collected. So. Mark, we had, a, we had a, a clarifying question come through on the issues, and it says that when you push the when you create the push pin on the drawings, um, mm -hmm. once they are closed, they're seeing that the issue is staying on the drawing. Um, what's the best way to get those off of the drawing? Is it when the drawing version is updated? Do you delete it? What's the best practice there? Um, yeah, so, all right, we can kind of get you halfway there. Um, the idea with the issue, when you got a lot of issues on here, you can, there is a filter option, so you could filter out the issues from here, and you can come over, click on filter, and then just say, all right, just show me status, you know, open, not the closed. That's one option, but you'll have to do that every time you come in here. Um, you don't want to delete the issue because that's a record. In fact, I'm not not even sure you can delete it. I can't. Oh, yeah, you can. Um, I don't think you want to delete the issue because you want it there as a matter of record. So I think you're, to kind of get you part of the way there, um, you can hide it by just using the filter option. Yeah, I'm just hearing a little background noise. So um, I'm sorry about that. If but um, th I don't think there's a way like with a markup, but I will t what I'll tell you this, you know, unlike a markup, I'm on, um, I have two versions right here. And if I go to revision seven, so if I go to a previous version, I don't have any markups here. If I go to this version, I do have markups. Now, if I upload another version of this, these markups will translate to the next version, but I can come in here and I can actually delete it. Now, in the BIM 360 days, we had an option that you would archive it, but we don't have that option here. But if I delete it in the new version, it will not delete the markups in the previous version. And I was kind of hoping that I had some markups in this previous version, but I just don't see them here. 
I'm not sure if I can add it. Yeah, see, you don't see it in that version. So the markups, you can delete from one version to another, but the issues you cannot. And let me just double check one thing here. You know, it's interesting. It's, um, if I create an issue here, and let's put this one out here. I would think I would still see this on revision eight, but we'll take a look. Hey, you don't. So it seems like they are, they, they can be tied to a version. I'll have to do a little research on that one. Normally, I, I they, think the, I, I think the way that it's supposed to work is if you create it, say on version seven here, and then it gets to be closed while still on version seven. I think if you upload a new version to version eight, I don't think that it flows through. I think There's that it only in. continues to flow through if it's in a non-closed status. In a non-closed, would you know that? I would think that makes sense. Yeah, that but would make I sense. I don't. I know that's the intent. I don't know if that's actually how it works. So we we may want to double check on that. Yeah, yeah, we'll double check on that. I'll, I'll have to run some tests. I'll upload a, a, another sheet here just to verify that, and we'll have some that are open, pending, closed, and in review and test that. We'll, we'll let you know what we find, Jack. Yeah. Good question, though. Sometimes I like to call these sessions Stump the Chump. And that's, that's <laughs> a good one. So, all right. Uh, it looks like Patrick asked a question as well. He said that uh, they're using Bluebeam for their design phase mm -hmm. and was wondering um, if they could do that in build without collaborate. Um, Patrick, maybe you could elaborate a little bit what you're doing in the design phase that you're looking to to replicate within build. Um, thinking Bluebeam, it might be some of that markup issue functionality that Mark has already shown. Uh, is there more that you can discuss there that we can maybe walk through with you? Please type in right now, Mark. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this and I'm going to, while I got a little time, I'm going to upload and test a question that just came up. So, so um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, hold on one second. Blake, if you can take over for a second. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, Patrick, I, I saw your message there. Um, so, yeah, uh, the intent of even docs here or build um, to create markups is that it's a very simplified markup tool. Um, it was created not to be a complete replacement of Bluebeam. Uh, Bluebeam has a lot of functionality there, right? If you're familiar with Bluebeam, it's got all the different buttons, um, custom stamp creation, all of that can happen uh, within Bluebeam. You're not going to have custom stamps or anything like that for markup capabilities inside of the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Um, if you are looking at kind of the least expensive way, the, the lowest cost of entry, uh, Docs is going to be the best bet to create markups. And one of the advantages of using Docs over something like Bluebeam is that Bluebeam is strictly limited to uh, PDFs and some of the more basic file formats, whereas um, Docs is everything from PDFs, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, some of those simpler tools, but you can also leverage the native formats of DWGs, DWFs, um, Navisworks files, Revit files, uh, Civil 3D files, Plant 3D files, so rather than having to own all of those different tools from the Autodesk uh, AEC collection, you can simply own a couple of licenses of docs, go in, still visualize, navigate around, um, see any of the property information associated with elements within the model, and then you can create markups on top of those and share those out. Uh, so it's definitely different workflows and, and how you interact with the information. Uh, if you want a simple tool that is mobile ready, I think that's where Docs really shines uh, and Build really shines. 
uh, if you want that more robust uh, markup capabilities, that's where Bluebeam is still going to be the best bet for you, Patrick. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, I will say one thing, if, if you have a lot of projects, if they're smaller to medium sized projects, but you have a lot of them, the workflow with Autodesk Construction Cloud is that you've got to create a project and then you've got to populate the folder structure with all the documents um, rather than with Bluebeam, you can just have those in the folder structure on your uh, computer and then open them in Bluebeam, create the markups, and then email those markups out or whatnot. However, you're however you're sharing those. Uh, if it's maybe a, a studio session or whatnot, um, you don't have to create a full blown project in Bluebeam. So that may be something that uh, if you're creating a lot of projects, it can be a little bit cumbersome. Um, you know, it's only three fields: uh, project name, a project number, and a project value. Um, I think those are the three requirements. Um, so it's it's not a heavy lift, but it is a, a manual process that you'd have to go through if you were creating a lot of projects. All right. So it looks like that answered all of the uh, questions in the chat. Um, if you guys that are still on, if you have any other uh, questions or workflows that you wanted to discuss in uh, build, in docs, in uh, takeoff, uh, in model coordination, we can discuss any of those here. We're kind of open ended uh, as it relates to the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Uh, so feel free to come off mute or uh, type in the chat any questions that you have. Um, Mark, any other any other things that you wanted to go over? Yeah, um, let me let me bring up on the build side with forms. So um, there is a there is there's some special uh, parameters you can use. Um, and hold on one second while I'm uploading a another version of the same file. Um, so I, I'll have an answer to the first question. Um, under templates, I did upload a template here under forms that um, I'm going to open this up in Bluebeam to show you what I did. Um, I'm going to switch over to Bluebeam right here. So this is a PDF in Bluebeam. Uh, this was I, I actually created this in Microsoft Word. Then I saved that as a PDF. Then using Bluebeam, I came up here to forms and I had it automatically create form fields. Um, this up here, what you see in this area up here, this is just a snapshot. It's just a picture, but these are the fields that got filled in. Now, by default, when you create a new field in, inside of um, um, Bluebeam, okay, when you click on it, notice it just calls it text and it gives it a number. All right, so these are some that I've created up here, just to kind of show you they're hanging around. If you if you actually come in here and you rename this, all right, and I'm gonna let me get rid of this one because it's kind of in the way. But if you rename it to match what you see here, double click and I type in plan grid underscore project underscore name. If I do that, all right, which I've already got up here. What that will do is it will then pull that information and from the from the build project and it will put it in here automatically for us. OK, now I just messed that up. I'm not going to save this, but I'm going to show you this PDF document. Look what happens now when I go to create a new form. And I base it off of that smart uh, the form. I simply called it smart fields in forms. I'm going to click on it. And it said plan grid earlier. It works in plan grid and it works here in build. And if you notice now when I scroll down, it's automatically filled in my project name, today's date, uh, my name, the company I work for, the project number, the address, my title, and my phone number. So if you think about all the other forms where you want to collect certain information, like the project name, the date, and the person filling it out, well, you just use those smart fields to you put them on the forms wherever they may need to be, 
and then it's just one less thing for somebody to have to fill out. So these are right here. These you have to type them in just like you see them listed here, and it works both in Bluebeam and Adobe Acrobat. Okay. One second here. I'm going to bring up a PDF document or a PowerPoint that I made just to kind of see if there's other stuff I want to show you guys, which I know there is. So let's see here. Uh, let me mention this for you guys too. If you've been using the Autodesk, Autodesk Construction Cloud for a while, um, you've probably had some experiences where it's kind of been slow or sluggish. Um, I would encourage you to go to health.autodesk.com. When you go there, you will access a dashboard. And from there, you can see a list of all the services. So here's Autodesk Build. All right, there's both the, the, the US version as well as the Europe version. They have two different servers. And you can see Docs, BIM Collaborate, Takeoff. Now you'll notice it didn't say BIM Collaborate Pro. That's because Pro and BIM Collaborate, it's this, it's Collaborate, and then there's a Pro version, so they're both affected here. But you'll notice you can subscribe to updates, and if you click on this, you put in your email address, and then you check off which which um, which apps you want to be notified of. So I've got in here ACC Admin Console. I don't care about Europe, so I'm just looking at the US stuff. But I want to know when something happens with build or the Autodesk construction data collector, Autodesk docs, drive, takeoff. So you check off which ones you want. And you hit save. And now when Autodesk makes an update to the construction cloud for any of the services you signed up for, you will receive an email from Autodesk. Now in Outlook, I have a rule set up that it pops up right in the middle of my screen. So and it also plays a tone that if I'm not looking at that screen and I'm working on another screen, I will hear the tone and that lets me know that says, hey, some an update just came out from the Autodesk Health dashboard. And then I can click on it and I can go directly here and see if something's operational, if it's degraded, if there's an outage, or if it, there may be maintenance coming. And you can see there's some scheduled maintenance right now. And it looks like on December 11th, it'll switch to uh, this little green will switch to a blue to let people know that you know there's maintenance. So I highly recommend that you sign up for the Autodesk dashboard. Now I will tell you this: it's if you experience problems where build or docs or design collaboration, if any of those tools tools don't seem to be working properly or you can't access it at all. Um, Contact us at Autodesk or at Applied Software. You know, just contact us. Go to our support page, support at asti.com, and just log a support case with us. When I see the case, you know, the first thing I do is I first check the health dashboard. But the health dashboard is not always real time because when there is a problem, sometimes the problem is isolated to specific companies and not to the entire cloud. So this is not always. Um, updated you know real time but if you do have a problem and then i can recreate it on my side i will then log a case with autodesk and when i do that it gets immediate attention autodesk will research it and if other people are having the same problem then they will change it to either either degraded or outage and we had an outage a few weeks ago but I can't remember the last time we had an outage since that since but prior to that one. So we will get sometimes degraded performance where some parts of, of the software work and other parts may be slow. But this is always a good place to come just to see that if you do see anything that's yellow or red, then you at least you know that there's a problem. If it's green, it may still be questionable, like I said, because it's not updated right away. All right, let's see here. A couple things to uh, another thing I want to talk to you about. If you haven't used this function, 
I'm sure you guys have heard of the bridge function and I've been doing a lot more. I've had a lot more conversations, questions around bridge. Um, you'll notice down here there's bridge. Bridge works with both build and docs. Um, oh, thanks, Cooper. Um, works with build and docs. It's limited to right now just sheets and Autodesk docs, any sort of document inside of Autodesk docs. The way it works is if you select on a file or groups of files, when you come up and hit share, you can now share it with another project. This is bridge right here. Why they don't say, you know, bridge another project or something like that, but you can share it with another project. I highly recommend you give this a title. You know, why are you, why are you taking files and sending it somewhere else? Uh, I'm going to say this one is, you know, for a uh, webinar. Show and tell. Now I'm going to select these three files and I'm going to say push them to a different project and I'll push them to. Project I have here. And I'll, I'm going to simply push it over. Well, I can't push it to docs. I got to push it over to build. I must have build turned on there. Um, yeah, I'll pick the East Residence Hall. And then notice I can set this to say automatically send new sheets, sheet versions. So if I ever update these sheets, they will automatically be sent to that project. So now it's just a matter of I hit share. There's no need for me to download these files and then upload them to the other project. I just took these files and I just bridged them over to there. Now, if I come out down here and I click on bridge, this is actually has three things going on here. First thing is if I go to outgoing, you can see all the stuff that I've sent off and to which project I sent it to. So here's my webinar show and tell. <clears throat> I sent it to the East Residence Hall project. Who sent it? If it was accepted, the, the date, okay? If I go to incoming, I could see all the stuff that I got from somebody else's project. So I received from this Praxis project, I received some files. Well, what files? If I click on it, it'll actually show me, oh, it looks like there was an Excel file that they sent me. If I go back to bridge projects, where this is a little bit different or what's unique about this for the outgoing and incoming. People have to be members of both projects. Unless you come over here and say bridge a new project and I can send this email to Blake. And I could say, hey, I'm inviting you to this project so you can bridge files, so send me your files. Blake doesn't have to be invited to the project, this project. He could just be a member of his own project and then take some files and bridge them over to me. And so that's that's what the this option gives us down here with with the bridge feature. Now I do want to show you one little difference though with files. Because I just bridged some sheets. If you actually grab a file and you use the bridge option. Uh, share. You'll notice right here, this is grayed out. It says automatically sync updates to target project. When you do individual files, you cannot select this. But if you select a folder or folders, when you share that, you'll see the option that says automatically sync. So in the files section, if you shared a folder and whenever you make updates to that folder, again, put in a title, select the project you want to send that to. Uh, you then actually not only can you select the project, which I'll do this. Not only do you select the project, you select which folder to take those files and put them in on the other project. So a few different options here on the file side, but again, that's the bridge function so that you don't have to download, upload or email files back and forth. 
Let's see here. Um, here's another feature you may not be aware of. I'm going to go back to this project because I got a lot more. I did a lot more work here. Most of you are probably aware of the version control. You know, every time you upload a new file or publish a new version of a Revit model, this works with Revit, AutoCAD, any PDF, um, Word, Excel. When you upload a new version, it creates a. It, when you upload, when you upload or publish a new version, it increments the version number. You can see I'm up to version 20. And so many of you are probably aware you could always go back and look at a previous version. So I could copy it, I can download it, or I can make it current. You can see when somebody uploaded a model, the date and the time that they did it. And if you notice at the very top, I had restored version five, and then I restored version six, and then I restored version 20, you know, so I, I was playing around with some showing some people re restoring files. So you're probably familiar with that. At least that people are, are more knowledgeable about that. However, if you come over here to the far right and you look at file activities, from here you can see information like Mark Church deleted a file. Then I restored the file. Then I viewed the file. Which file? This one that I picked on. This one right here. Here's the name. If I go back to maybe the last 30 days, you can see when I published the markup, when I unpublished the markup. If I go back three months, there's more publishing. Here I submitted this drawing for review and I rejected it. So what's all the activity that we can monitor? If I come up here to filter, I can actually look at all the different, oops, not that, activity. I can look at all the different activities. When I copy the file, when I lock the file, edit the description. Pretty good long list here of all the different activities that are monitored for our files. So it's a lot more than just keeping a version. You can actually look at the different activity. I, this came into effect when I had one customer call me and they said, uh, I'm missing some files. And I'm like, well, then, you know, you can go in there and just undelete them. He's like, yeah, but I need to know who deleted them. All right. So we went and we looked at we looked at the logs. And at the time, the filter option wasn't available. So we did an export to Excel. And then we went into Excel and did a filter. But now I could come in here and I could filter this and I could look for files that were deleted. And then I can see who deleted it because again, everything is is stamped with the person's name. So, something I wanted to make people aware of, not everybody knew about that.